Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches, and this is my hot take on the new Frederick Constant Slimline Monolithic Manufacture, a watch I really don't like very much. And I don't normally do hot takes on watches I really don't like, but there is something in this watch, i.e. The, the movement, that I think is really interesting. So I'm going to do my take on it anyway. See you on the other side. So, in, before getting into the hot take on the Frederick Constant Slimline Monolithic Manufacture, lots of words in there, one thing I should say is I really like Frederick Constant as a brand. I really love their ideal of inclusive luxury. That's why Frederick Constant was probably the first uh, luxury Swiss watch I bought, which got me into this hobby and down this rabbit hole. However, moving on, their formal aesthetic isn't really my thing, and I've tended to gravitate to their sister brand, Alpina, with its much more sporting pretensions, but that affection has remained. None of that affection, however, is enough to get me into this watch, which, broadly speaking, I would describe as... Awful, horrible, terrible. Um, it's really old-fashioned. It's not retro. It's not. There's nothing hip or cool about this. This is generally old-fashioned, fuddy-duddy numbers and numerals and hands and case shape and everything. And the other thing too is across the board, Frederick can start for all of the the way I will laud it for its idea of um, accessible and inclusive luxury, sometimes it struggles to match its budget with its ambitions. It's great that Frederick Constant goes, uh, keeps such tight control on its budgets. I think that's brilliant. But sometimes it lets its ambitions run away too far. And you see that when it tries to do too much with dial textures and so forth. Guilloche finishes, engine turn finishes, really rely on a crisp, precise, really exacting finish, which you just can't achieve with the kind of stamping processes which are all Frederick Constant can use at the kinds of budgets it's aiming for. I would prefer to see Frederick Constant generally wind back its ambition, wind back what it tries to do with its dial texturing more so that it can deliver what it's trying to do really well. And I think with my classic index GMT, I think they nail it with this and other models where they go for like this stamped guilloche, I think they miss out. And instead of giving that sense of luxury that they're aiming for, it comes across as a bit cheap. Now, on this model in particular, though, the hyper trying to marry the hyper modern, more futuristic than tomorrow monolithic design is just completely wrong. There isn't a creative tension between the rest of the watch and this new monolith component adding interest and excitement. In fact, all you've got is a jarring incongruity. It's a mishmash of ideas, and fundamentally, that is why I think this watch is, frankly, an aesthetic failure. But putting all of the watch aside, now let's talk about the movement, and that's potentially really interesting. In short, I'm not going to try and explain everything about how it works. There's plenty of videos uh, from Monochrome and others describing all this. But in 25 words or less, the movement essentially removes the sprung balance wheel with its 20 plus components and releases it, replaces it sorry, with a single monolithic silicon part. What this means in practice is a silicon hairspring oscillating at around about 4 hertz with an amplitude of about 300 degrees is replaced by some silicon fingers oscillating at around about 40 hertz with an amplitude of 6 degrees. Now the details on all this are sketchy, but basically this offers the prospect of longer lives because less bearing services, less friction, less lubrication required, 
easier servicing because it's just a one part out, one part in kind of repair process. Longer power reserves because the torque requirements are so much lower. Greater accuracy and total anti-magnetism. Increased shock resistance. All in all, this is just looking like a better way of regulating your watch. Now, this has been tried before. This kind of use of silicon monolithic components has been tried by Zenith, Gerard Perigot, Ulysse Nardin, um, Parmigiani. But in every one of those cases, this has been in very, very expensive prototype or limited production runs and never seems to have gone mainstream. Frederick Constant, on the other hand, seems to be putting in place things here which is going to make this a mainstream technology we'll admit it's still limited we are talking about what 1700 items being made 1620 in steel 81 why 81 i don't get that number in gold but the important thing is the 1600 odd steel pieces are coming at a price of 4800 dollars us which is probably about a quarter of the price of what people from zenith and gp and uh Yulis nadan and parmigiani have tried to do in the past so that in itself the pricing the sheer number of albeit it's a limited edition but the, having a number up in the thousands is a big step. Having the price under 5000 is a huge step. So that itself is kind of interesting. But for me, what's really exciting is that there's a prospect that this kind of technology could escape from one brand and actually change the whole industry. Because you see, this this technology presents a real and present challenge to Niverox. Look, I'll go back a bit. There's been a lot of discussion about ETA and its uh, stranglehold on the movements market. That's kind of died back. So Prod and Solita, obviously, and and other smaller in-house movement manufacturer movements and other third-party manufacturers are stepping up, and the dominance of ETA is kind of shrinking back. That's certainly in the whole movement space, but. What people don't seem to don't talk about as much is that in the for the escapement, Niverox still reigns supreme. The vast bulk of those other third party movements or in-house manufacturers still rely on an escapement from Niverox, which is part of the Swatch Group. This technology seeks to completely change that balance because whereas so far the skill to make drive trains and and power units for watches has moved out that important escapement technology the ability to make those is still restricted to a very small number of companies using essentially the same technology this escapement technology is developed by a completely independent Dutch company, Flexus. They are not part of Frederick Constant. Everything in all the press releases I've seen, in all of the um, information I can read on the Flexus site, indicates that this particular component was developed with Frederick Constant. However, Flexus is open to working with other manufacturers, dealing with other companies and developing their own solutions using this technology. If this technology works, if the Frederick Constant movement system is proves to be viable, can you imagine what would happen if Breitling came in and said, we're going to produce a whole new range of in-house movements based on this technology and just leapfrog everything that Omega is doing in with its Meta certified um, coaxial calibers. Just leapfrog everything that uh, Rolex is trying to achieve with its parachrome calibers. Imagine if Solita went there and introduced a whole new um, family of third-party movements available to all comers using this technology, potentially taking relatively small companies that are simply willing to buy these movements and giving them movements far superior to watches from brands like Rolex and Omega. This could be an industry-changing moment. Will it? I don't know. I have no idea how this technology is going to develop in future. What I would say is I 
really wish it had come in a more interesting watch. The from Frederick Constant, something like the High Line would have been far more obvious given the the sort of futuristic, it's not really futuristic because it is kind of 70s looking, but it's got the 70s futurist feel would have lined up nicely with this. I think maybe even taking it a little off Broadway, sticking it into an Alpina, like an Alpina 4, would have worked better than putting it in this horrendously old-fashioned case. I would say that if I was another company looking looking to use this technology, I would try very hard to resist the urge to put it on the front. As exciting as it is, I suspect the buzzing away at 40 hertz is unlikely to ever be as pleasing as the gentle, almost languid swing of a balance wheel that um, is so pleasant to watch. I would hide this at the back Make it something that you can look at as a bit of a party piece from, as I say, the back, but not necessarily make on display at all times through the front of the watch. So, in essence, what do I say? This watch, the Frederick Constant Slimline Monolithic Manufacturer, is a horrible watch with an intensely interesting movement. And really, all I'm waiting to see is where this leads. And if I never have to look at this actual watch ever again, I'll probably be pretty happy. What are your thoughts? So there you go. My hot take on the Frederick Constant Slimline Monolithic Manufacturer. A watch that I think is terrible, which I, if I never see again, I'll be happy about. But you know what? I really do want to see that movement. I want to see that technology turning up in different places, um, potentially presenting us with a much more interesting movement landscape. What do you guys think below? Let me know in the comments. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches, and I'll see you later. Bye.